Blessings to you today as we gather for this uh, fifth Sunday in the season of Easter. Our service today is a, a service of prayer and preaching uh, from Trinity Lutheran Church from Keene, New Hampshire. And so we welcome all of you in the name of Jesus, praying the Lord's blessings upon you and upon our worship today. For those of you that uh, uh, do have the Lutheran service book at home, uh, that service, uh, Prayer of Preaching, can be found on page 260. Um, and if you uh, receive this uh, by way of our email, 
you can also access the service order uh, for the parts of the service that we will need uh, when we get into the uh, service a little bit later. So I would turn your attention then to that uh, service of prayer and preaching on page 260 in Lutheran Service Book. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of the wicked. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Sanctify us in your truth, for your word is truth. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The first of those songs that we used uh, this morning... Uh, are come people of the risen king uh, by the Gettys and Stuart uh, Townen. And uh, this one is cornerstone uh, by a host of uh, artists and is copyrighted. Uh, and we do, uh, we'll post later the credits from CCLI at the end of our video today.
us pray. O oh God, the giver of all that is good, by your holy inspiration, grant that we may think those things that are right and by your merciful guiding, accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The word of the Lord for today comes from the first letter of Peter, and through these past weeks we've been reflecting on Peter's letter, as we recall, it was written to uh, the church in exile. And I know that uh, a lot of us feel like we're in that uh, time, that dis uh, diaspora, as we're scattered uh, apart from one another. And so the letter, as we've kind of reflected over the past few weeks, does have kind of a, uh, a very contemporary feel to it. And uh, our, feel our reading for today comes, uh, brings us to the second chapter uh, where we pick it up with the 13th verse, and Peter continues that uh, ongoing theme of uh, suffering, uh, sometimes unjustly for, uh, for our faith. But in verse 13, be subject for the Lord's sake to every human institution, whether it be to the emperor as supreme or to governors as sent by him to punish those who do evil and to praise those who do good. For this is the will of God, that by doing good, you should put to silence the ignorance of foolish people. Live as people who are free, not using your freedom as a cover-up for evil, but living as servants of God. Honor everyone, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the emperor. Servants, be subject to your masters with all respect, not only to the good and the gentle, but also to the unjust. For this is a gracious thing. When mindful of God, one endures sorrows while suffering unjustly. For what credit is it if when you sin and are beaten for it, you endure? But if when you do good and suffer for it, you endure, this is a gracious thing in the sight of God. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you might follow in his steps. He committed no sin, neither was deceit found in his mouth, and when he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and to live to righteousness. For by his wounds you have been healed. For you were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and the overseer of your soul. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We join together in the common responsory on page 263. Forever, O oh Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. For our catechetical uh, reflection, as we reflect each week on some part of the small catechism, I would just turn your attention to the third article of the Creed today, and also Luther's explanation from, that, uh, uh, from the catechism. And if you don't have access to that through our worship uh, folder today, uh, then you may find that on page 323 in uh, the Lutheran service book. Page 323, where we confess this, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. What does this mean? I believe that I cannot, by my own reason or strength, believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to him. 
But the Holy Spirit has kept me in the true faith. In the same way he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian church, he daily and richly forgives all my sins and the sins of all believers, where on the last day he will raise me and all the dead and give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ. This is most certainly true. Amen. So if you have your Bibles uh, today, I would like to just have you turn for our meditation to uh, 1 Peter chapter 2, uh, verses 13 and following, but we're going to focus mostly on verses 19 to 25 today. But the word of the Lord uh, that I'd like to focus on and use as kind of our theme, Peter says this, he says, live as people who are free, not using your freedom as a cover up for evil, but living as servants. Of God. Well, it was the Saturday before Easter in 1530 when just before his colleagues left to go to leave from the Coburg Castle to Augsburg where they would confess the evangelical faith, Martin Luther preached a sermon on cross bearing and suffering in the life of the Christian. And in that sermon, this is what he said. He said, therefore, since it is better to have a cross than to be without one, nobody should dread or be afraid of it. After all, you have a good, strong promise with which to comfort yourself. Besides, the gospel cannot come to the fore except through in suffering and the cross. I think we're more than ever uh, in need of that comfort in these trying situations. And God in his grace uh, delivers, as he always does, that we're tormented by our sins, we have God's assurance that he has suffered for us. Troubled by our persecutor or the mockers of the faith, we know that God will finally vindicate all of those in his judgment. Tried by our sickness or our adversity, we can look up to him as our shepherd and overseer and know that we rest secure in those loving hands. And it's precisely because of those assurances that we, as God's people, are truly set free, free to serve. Where new life in Christ means service, which may include suffering, and always includes surrender, but it's all because we've been set free by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are indeed in Christ free to serve. Amen. So beginning with chapter 2, verse 13, Peter sets about to encourage the exiles in all areas of their life whether it be in the, the political realm, uh, the social realm, their domestic well-being in their homes, whether it's in their church, it's in all of their responsibilities that this vocation of freedom gets played out as God's people. And that's even in a world that has very sharply differing moral values. That as the baptized and redeemed of Jesus, we daily apply this life in all of the circumstances, no matter what realm we as God's people operate in. Now what's at stake here, of course, is that we at times are sometimes called to, to suffering. And admittedly, I have to just share with you today that it has been a, an emotionally rough week uh, for me personally. Um, in fact, I talked with a number of colleagues this week, and uh, I think all of us are really just starting to feel the weight and the burden, as I'm sure are all of you and those closest to you. I mean, even Christians at this particular point in time become very worn out 
despite the fact that there's souls out there that are unguarded, as it were, but even for the ones that are guarded, it becomes a difficult. It, it's hard to stay, in a sense, kind of on that, that high ground. All kinds of things are beginning to come out, even now, where alcoholism and uh, suicides and and just deep depression that people are sinking into is becoming more and more a thing that, that people are experiencing in the wake of all of this. From whence comes our help and our strength, our very salvation? It comes from Jesus, whose life and death not only provides an example of bearing up under suffering, but who then becomes the very means for us to accomplish that. That Jesus who suffers on our behalf, that Jesus who has set the course for us, the footprints in advance, that Jesus who has claimed each of us through the waters of holy baptism, clothed us in his righteousness, given us life, and even now lives in us and bids us to follow. That Jesus. Wherein it is only in Christ's death that it makes it possible for us to cease to live for sin and to live for righteousness, even in the most extreme conditions. Peter, by the Holy Spirit's intervention and graciousness, points us in that direction in our text today. Verse 13, be subject, willingly. Willingly submitting oneself to, for the Lord's sake, he says to every human institution, whether it be the emperor or for its governors that are sent to do their work. Verse 16, live as people that are free, not using your freedom as a cover up for evil, but living as servants of God. Honor everyone, he says. Love the brotherhood. Fear God. Honor the emperor. I don't know about you, but there's a lot of people today, even Christians, who are not really wanting to do that. They don't want to honor what people are trying to tell us to do to try to help us get to where we need to be. And admittedly, there may be. There may be some overreaching on government in our part now. But the issue remains, at least on this side of heaven, we are called to suffer. And Jesus kind of gets at that when he says that the poor you will always have with you. But more the blessed part is, is that there is never a time and never will be a time when God has not put his holy flock in the midst of the suffering. Even if they suffer themselves. Which is to say there will never be a time when you and I, as the baptized and redeemed of Jesus Christ, are not needed. Or when God won't call us to freedom so that we ourselves can take that freedom and use it to serve our neighbors. The difficult task is to frame a response Obviously, and we're constantly discerning and studying God's word and spending time in prayer to see how that gets carried out in an appropriate way that honors both those that we serve on earth and also our governors and our emperor. Jesus, through Peter, again, shows us the way, the better way. Well, one of the writers of the church, Herman Sasa, once put it this way. He said, to believe in the cross always means to carry the cross. And a yes to the cross of Christ is also a yes to my cross, Jesus says. And Peter gets at that in verse 19 when he said, this is a gracious thing. Literally, he's saying this is grace when, mindful of God, one has to endure suffering unjustly. Or if when you do good and suffer and you endure, again, this is grace. This is a gracious thing in the sight of God. It's a gracious thing to be conscious and mindful of not only who we glorify and serve, namely our Heavenly Father, but to be consciously aware of God who fills us continually as the baptized and redeemed of Jesus. 
that we possess the Spirit, the same Holy Spirit that fell on Jesus at his baptism. We possess the same Spirit that fell upon the disciples at Pentecost. And this is a gracious thing. We do not walk alone on this path that Jesus has set us. It's also a gracious thing when we may have to suffer for good. Where that suffering happens from without or, or from within. That is that we feel it deeply in our person as it takes great effort and great sacrifice on our part to step out. Especially when we as God's people still have needs of our own. Again, pointing us to Jesus, he shows us that way of love. Verse 21, for this you have been called, doing good, because, because Christ suffered for you. Leaving you an example, a, a, a perfectly written copy from which everything else can be patterned so that you might follow in his steps. And I say that sometimes, even for the mature in faith, we have to get back to the basics of service. With the simple tracing of the letters, you recall how when you, you were first learning how to write, we had this pattern, this piece of paper, and the lines and the letters, and you constantly just went over and over and over, and then eventually you were able to venture out on your own, and you didn't need the letters, but you could write between the lines, and then before then, you didn't really need the lines at all. It became a very extension. Writing became an extension of your hand or of your pencil. And so also our Savior, teaching us, guiding us, filling us, the Savior who was sent into the world, heaped upon with all of the sins of humanity. To be the person of all men. Never committing sin, but yet taking those sins on. To pay the satisfaction. Christ is that example. As beginning students, again, learn to trace that. We constantly come to the well for forgiveness. We constantly come to the well to draw the life that God gives us through his word and his sacraments. To hear the word of forgiveness. To be set again on this path of service. Where Christ is also not again, not only just the example, but he becomes the very means of our lives of service in him. Covering our sin. Of not only showing us the way, but of being the way and the life and the truth. Verse 24, he himself bore our sins on the tree that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. Ponder that just for a minute. Think about that. The Easter season, said one commentator, is really just the reverse of Lent. Where in Lent we approach the shadow of the cross, but always with the light of Easter in perspective. But then once we get through the suffering, we get through Easter, that cross never loses its shadow. As we now venture forth from Calvary, where Jesus, again, is not only the example, but he's also the very means. By his wounds you have been healed. Whereby now we can be the Savior's healing. We can be the Savior's presence. We can be the Savior's voice and hands and heart and feet in government, at work, in our marriages, in church, wherever God in vocation places you. No matter where we are as his own. And what we may have to endure, perhaps even more so for the sake of his name, with Christ as our shepherd, Peter says, and Christ as our overseer, we are always saved. In my devotional thoughts, which probably like yours have kind of been all over the place at this point, I came across this prayer that I kind of adapted 
Um, and I'm not even sure really how much uh, it is of the original author or who the original author is, because I do that with prayers sometimes. I'll take prayers, and before I know it, they sort of become my own. But I wanted to just share that prayer with us today as we reflect again on our calling in Christ. Look, Lord, an empty vessel that needs to be filled. My Lord, fill it. I am weak in faith, Lord, strengthen me. I am cold in love, Lord, warm me and make me fervent that my love may go to my neighbor. I do not have a strong or firm faith. At times I doubt and I'm unable to trust you completely. Lord, help me. Strengthen my faith and my trust in you, in whom I have ensured all my treasure. For I am poor, but you are rich. I am wayward, but you are upright. Therefore, I remain with you, from whom I can receive, but to whom I give little. But what you've given me, and what you have made me, I do give. That what little I have to offer you by grace, you would use, and mightily, and today, and tomorrow. Amen. Baptized and redeemed of Jesus, be mindful of the Lord, who again comes to you in his word and sacrament. Continue in the good work that you've been given in the Lord to do. Stand firm in the strength of Christ and in the power of his suffering and in the power of his death and in the power of his resurrection. I know that's a tall order in any season of life. But not only when Jesus shows us the way, but who is the way, the truth, and the life, does it become possible. For the sake of Jesus Christ and in his name, amen. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Once again, for our prayers today, I turn your attention to page 265 in the Lutheran Service Book, and we will be using the responsive prayer that's printed there. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the gift of divine peace and pardon, with all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the Holy Christian Church here and scattered throughout the world, and for the proclamation of the gospel and the calling of all to faith in him, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this nation, for our cities and communities, and for the common welfare of us all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather and for the fruitfulness of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick and dying and for all those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those who labor, for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For those in need, for the hungry and the homeless, for the widowed and the orphaned, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Gracious Father, we lift up to you those that are on our hearts this day. Each of us bringing to you those in our lives and perhaps even our very selves who call on you in this time. And so we just take a moment of silence to lift them up to you in Jesus' name. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Finally, for these and all our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Blessed Lord, you have caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we may so hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart that by the patience and the comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and ever hold fast 
the blessed hope of everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger, and I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, and that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the wicked foe may have no power over me. Amen. For our closing song today, I'd like to uh, join together in the song, There is a Redeemer. be to God. In the almighty and merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. Once again, we'd like to thank you for worshiping with us at Trinity Lutheran Church in Keene, New Hampshire. Uh, if you would like to learn more about uh, our church, uh, you may join us at tlckeene.org or also Trinity Lutheran Church also on Facebook. 
Uh, may the Lord continue to bless and to keep you, and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Have a great week.